the NFT thing, I said to you, as because you had said before the show, oh, I don't know if the internet's ready for this. You were probably meaning the homestead, or I don't even know if, if your audience is homesteaders, are they? They're just like... Uh, I think some of my audience are. I think some aren't. Um, I think most of my audience really cares about animals and, and doing the right thing by animals. I think most of my audience likes a good story. I think they're curious, at the very least curious about farms. Um, yeah, but, but I, don't, I don't think I actually have, like if I compared my audience to what yeah. I perceive as your audience, I think it's, it's probably less like true full-on home yeah. seekers. You keep saying, you keep referring to stories, and maybe that's where I was getting at with your, uh, I'm, not, I'm not having kids by choice, you just told a story. If you say, I'm not having kids, there's an open loop there, Morgan, and, and, and people don't know the end of the story. Mm-hmm. But you quickly took that open loop and closed it. You told a story right there in that. And then when we talked about the social distance thing, you, you, you quickly talked about your, when you're giving these whys and, and, your, and your wife working in the hospital, you're also giving a story. So maybe in some ways, these stories are disarming people. Possibly. I, I just love telling stories. I, and they're certainly given the why. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I love reading. I love listening to stories. I love watching things. I, stories are so always been so important to me since, you know, I don't know, probably forever. <laughs> What's the last story you read? Um, last story I read, um, I guess, you know, just even coming over here, I was listening to a podcast, um, all about, uh, Bart Simpson mania Hmm. from, uh, Mm. you know, like early nineties. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, just, (laughs) it was, it was a woman who kind of went through and broke it all down and told the whole story (laughs) of that and like how it was a culturally important point in the in our country's history and sort of how it sort of set up a pivot for a lot of things and yeah it was a good story <laughs> bart simpson's still around simpson's still going of course oh oh, it's oh like yeah. the longest oh, running I forget, show yeah, you, you live in a time capsule yeah. no, no, I, I used to really like the simpsons but yeah. then I don't, it's, I don't know it's not as good to me I, as it I, used to be. I, I went into a time capsule <laughs> well it's funny so so actually matt graining who's the guy who can created the simpsons okay he was the guy who first motivated me to like start drawing comics mm. and it wasn't because of the simpsons he actually wrote this book like it was a collection of comic strips called uh, school is hell and it was just like this like little school is hell, school is hell. And oh yeah he had a whole series yeah, okay, he had, like, love that. is hell work <laughs> is hell um i forget out but like school is hell which you know when you're a 10 year old or 11 year old and you discover that in the bookstore and you're like these things look like the simpsons i'm curious mm-hmm. about this book and like that book just sort of like blew my mind and like it got me motivated to draw comics. It got me to being kind of a person who was sort of like a little bit anti authority streak, like really ratcheted up a level. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it all came from Matt Graney. <laughs> uh, what were you, what was the last story you watched? Uh, that's a good one. You got like, Netflix? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, we do have Netflix. Oh, you know what? Boba Fett. Uh, book of Boba oh yeah, Fett. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you like the that, sci-fi stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I've just always been a big Star Wars fan. But I like sci-fi. I like a mix of stuff. Um, Letter Kenny is probably my favorite current TV show right now. Uh-huh. Um, uh. And do you ever talk about this on your on your? I don't talk about it, but I put. So I think one of my things, my, a lot of my videos are known for is I add clips to like everything. Yeah. Okay. And so so I don't like I'm not going to be like, "Hey, let me tell you about this thing I saw in Letterkenny," but I might say something and then cut a 3 second yeah. clip from Letterkenny into it. That I do all the time. I'm not being rude. I'm actually looking up a screenshot. I wanted to ask you about it cuz you you asked us doing a little research going into this. You had asked your audience for questions. You were gonna do a little Q and A, okay? And okay. it was all about ducks, and that's when I had to text you, uh, Morgan. We're probably not gonna talk about ducks. Do you care? Do you love to talk about ducks? I love talking about the animals so for sure. <laughs> ducks, geese. Are you disappointed? You know, funny, I, I are you like disappointed? I, we're not talking about no, ducks. No, no. You know, it's funny though. I think a lot of people think of me as being known for ducks. I actually would say that the animal I know the most about and most passionate about is goose because I, I actually oh. think it's like. The most sustainable form of poultry. They are oh, yeah. amazing for the land. Like, yeah. love their personalities. Yeah, I'm a big goose guy. Do you do a Christmas goose? Uh, 
Actually, this year we didn't because I sold out of them. What you have for <laughs> you are a farmer. We, we had we, we had a you cold, are a farmer. <laughs> we had a cold duck instead. <laughs> Where is this? So do you? But you like to eat duck? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean goose. D- both. Yeah. yeah. Which one do you like better? Uh, probably goose. I mean, I find meat wise they're pretty similar. I think the difference is it's just one's chicken scale and one's turkey scale. Ah. So I was gonna go through these. Com- I-, I wanted to ask you some of these questions. These people asked you all right i mean i skipped through all the the duck one not that i have a problem i, I got no problems with ducks um it's just i think i like i think we're more than that <laughs> that's where i'm going with my homesteading lately is we're more than just food growers homesteading is a lifestyle that includes we like to watch the olympics they're on right now you know so it's yeah. probably tivo in it over there or whatever it is and um Seinfeld came to Netflix, and so that's kind of exciting. That's actually that you know that's been one of my comfort shows. Like (laughs) when I'm dead tired and I don't want to do anything, you know, an old episode of Seinfeld. That's always good. Yeah, 